Hello, everybody. Happy Monday to you. I'm glad you could join with us uh, this first day of the week. And as I shared yesterday in our online service, I want to share with you Jesus's final five parables. I'm calling them the final five. And each day, Monday through Friday uh, this week, we're going to share one of these parables. And uh, we need to understand that during this last week, uh, as Jesus had entered into Jerusalem triumphantly, from there, everything kind of went bad. Uh, there was very little good that took place the rest of that week. Jesus had to clear out the temple once again because of what was going on in, in there that was uh, uh, ir ir irreverent to the Lord. Uh, his authority was challenged and questioned by the religious leaders. One of his disciples agreed with those religious leaders to betray Jesus for 30 silver coins. Uh, the rest, again, he was arrested. Uh, he, uh, the other disciples fled in fear. Uh, the, the, uh, Peter denied him. The crowd shouted, crucify him. And of course, he was sacrificed on the cross. But in the middle of this, understand, it is God's plan. In the middle of this all going on, Jesus taught five very precious parables that we can learn some wonderful truth from. And that's what I want to do this week, is share from those parables, the final five. Understand, parables were, were Jesus's way of revealing heavenly truth with an earthly story. And maybe these final five parables contain the most important truths for, uh, for us to know and to live. And so this week, we're going to highlight those parables. So first of all, the final five parables begin with parable number one. It's the parable of the two sons, and it's found in Matthew chapter 21. In fact, all five of these parables I'm going to be referring to are found in Matthew. Matthew chapter 21, beginning at verse 28, and Jesus tells the parable this way. What do you think, he said? There was a man who had two sons. He went to the feast and said, son, Go and work today in the vineyard. I will not, the son answered. But later he changed his mind and went. Then the father went to the other son and said the same thing. And this son answered, I will, sir. But he never did go. Jesus asked, which of the two did what his father wanted? The religious leaders answered, the first. Jesus said to them, truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are entering into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you to show you the way of righteousness and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes did. And even after you saw this, you did not repent and believe him. So what this first parable illustrates is true obedience. We have two sons, two brothers, and they made two distinct choices. The distinction between what I call oral faith and obedient faith. Anyone, in fact, many do say, I will, Lord, and then they don't do a thing, just like the second son. I call them pretenders. Mere lip service, with no intention, desire, or thought of even doing what was asked or required. The test of true obedience is doing what has been asked or expected as a follower of Jesus. So here's the reality here. For the vast majority, if not every believer of Jesus, and even for myself, the response to God's calling and direction is one of, no, I will not. Just like that second son, or that first son. He, he uh, that the, the immediate response when we know God wants us to do something, we say, no, I don't want to do that. It takes us out of our comfort zone and, and our, our response is, is kind of truthful. No, I don't want to do that. Whether it's a fear or a doubt or just the fact uh, uh, that the truthful understanding that we know we are not able to accomplish that task on our own. Let me remind you of a couple of examples. Remember Moses? When God called Moses, Moses' response was, no, I can't do that. I can't do what you're asking. I can't lead the people of Israel. I can't deliver them. And that was his first response. Or how about Jonah? Remember Jonah? 
God called him to go to the people of Nineveh and preach to them the need for repentance. And Jonah's first and immediate response was like that of the first son, I will not. He didn't want to go to Nineveh. He hated the Ninevites. And he knew that Jesus uh, would save them if they cried out to him. And, and, and so Jonah's response was no. But for both Moses and Jonah, they eventually said okay. And even though they said no at first, they went and did what the Lord had called them to do. How many of you wish that you could have a do-over? I think practically every day. There's something that I do that I, oh Lord, I wish I could do that over. You know, we all, we all make mistakes. We all say something and we wish we could uh, get that do over. And uh, it happens to every one of us. But that's what God offers. He gives us the chance for a do over. Again, remember Moses and Jonah. He gave them a chance to do it over. And Jesus tells us that this first son who said, I will not, it says he changed his mind and obeyed. That is uh, the exact definition. That's the exact definition of repentance, to change our mind and to turn around and to do what we're supposed to do. That's exactly how Jesus sum summarized this parable when he compared the two sons to the sinners uh, he, he, and the, the religious leaders, that the, the, the tax collectors and the prostitutes that they heard, they heard the message of John the Baptist and they repented and believed. But that the, the Pharisees, who many times uh, in their, re, in their uh, leadership and, and, and their religious obedience, they would say yes to the Lord, but they wouldn't do what they were supposed to do. And so we see this distinction. The reality is that uh, many say the right thing, that lip service. Many say, yes, Lord, I will. And then they do nothing. Understand, that's, that's lying. When you say you're going to do something and you don't do it, that's lying. But when we say that to God that we're going to do something, we're going to live for him, and we don't, that's pretty serious. And then there are precious few, precious few, who say yes and immediately obey. I haven't done that. I, I wish I could say that I immediately obey the Lord, but I know I don't. But there's are some that precious few that say yes and immediately obey. But here's the wonderful truth. The wonderful truth of this parable, Jesus highlights that it's okay to say no, but then change your mind and do the right thing. And that's, what, that's why Jesus told this parable. Because this first son, this first son illustrates each and every one of us because we've all said no. But God gives us the chance to change our mind. We've all also been that second son where we say, yes, Lord, I will, and then we haven't. So let's be honest. But still there is that time, that opportunity, that do-over to change our mind and to do what the Lord has asked us to do. Let us always remember this parable of the two sons and the examples that they give to us of how we can be obedient to the Lord. Will you pray with me? Lord, we just thank you for the opportunity of second chances that you give to us to change our mind and to obediently follow you. Lord, I pray that as we prepare for Easter this week, Lord, and as we've seen this parable, the two sons, Lord, help us, help us to change our mind and to live for you each and every day. Lord, help us, help us, Lord. Give us the strength to be obedient to you in all things. We thank you now, Jesus. In your name we pray, amen. God bless you. Thanks for joining me. And I hope to see you again tomorrow for parable number two.